I was 10 years old, staying overnight at a friend's in Los Angeles, and his mother came into the room. And she said, do you guys want to go see the Enterprise fly? I said, the Starship? <laughs> she looked at me and said, no. The space shuttle. The next day, we got up at 3.30 in the morning, piled into the Volvo and headed out into the desert, and that's where I saw it. Out there in the distance, on the back of a big 747, was a black and white spaceship. There were thousands of us out there in the desert. We were all screaming and yelling. Exciting stuff for a 10-year-old. But the excitement faded. And like I'm sure it is for many of you, I still felt distant and disconnected from space. I'm here today to tell you that, in fact, we're all closer to space than you think. I'm going to tell you my personal journey of how I got closer to space, why it matters, and what's coming next. I always loved science, ended up getting a PhD in chemistry, going to work in the pharmaceutical industry. Space was always kind of there, but it was just something that was in the background. I think there's something in all of us that makes us want to be explorers, part of something ambitious and exciting, something bigger. But the closest I was ever going to come to being part of the space program was watching it on TV or sending away to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for pictures of the planets and stars and just dreaming. But something changed all that for me. It took a while, but one day I got a phone call from this lady out of the blue. She says, Dr. Savin, would you like to work with us and NASA and develop an experiment and launch it into space? I couldn't believe it. I actually stood up on my cubicle and looked around to see if there was somebody out there filming or laughing. <laughs> I decided to play along. I said, sure, let's uh, develop an experiment, launch it on a space shuttle and see what happens. She, she was very serious and she said, well, Dr. Savin, we don't have space shuttles anymore, but we do have the International Space Station. And that is where we're going to run this experiment. I started to think that this is no joke. I, it's hard for me to explain, but at the time, I did not understand the implications of that phone call. What it was going to do for me, what I was going to drag a bunch of my friends into. But in retrospect, I should have expected the outcome. After the phone call, I sat down and I wrote a letter to 10 of my friends. And I said, I had been contacted by somebody associated with NASA and asked to develop an experiment to launch into space. And I need some help. And this is no joke. I figured my friends are smart people. Together, we'd be able to figure something out. A week later, I walk into that meeting room, and there are 25 people in there. There are so many people in this little meeting room that there were people having to stand, and I didn't recognize some of them. I stepped out of the meeting room, looked at my scheduler. Was this the right room? Was this the right time? It was. I walked back in, saw one of my friends, and asked him, who are all these people? He looked around and said, you know, I'm not sure. All I know is I've been dreaming about this day all my life. Ultimately, we developed five separate teams, technical teams, and we launched and executed five experiments on the International Space Station. Some of the experiments worked, some of them didn't. But in the end, we were better for the experience. And we knew that in some way, some of the results would find their way into products that would touch people's lives. One of the most impactful aspects of this little project were just the conversations we had with each other. We talked about seemingly basic, mundane things like the behavior of water, conversations we had not had since we were students in school. It made us reevaluate the things that we thought we knew. It was at that point that I knew that I was closer to space than I had originally thought, and that my relationship with space was going to have an impact on my life that went beyond the science. So why was this event so impactful to myself and to my friends? I, like many of my friends, am a Trekkie. <laughs> I've watched, and I still watch, episodes of Star Trek and all its subsequent incarnations. I think it's fun to see the imagination of visionaries like Gene Roddenberry play out in stories of exploration. 
And I have often dreamt of someday exploring the final frontier myself. The Apollo missions taught us that we could achieve great things and that audacious goal setting led to outstanding breakthroughs. It also taught us that space travel was real and that it was done by real people. The Voyager, Viking, Curiosity, and other missions taught us that we could go out into space and explore. And the space shuttle missions went even further, teaching us that in addition to being exciting, space travel could be routine. It also taught us that normal people, like school teachers, for example, if they worked really hard, were at the top of their class, and jogged a lot, <laughs> could end up being astronauts too. The space shuttle program also showed us that as routine as it may seem, this was still a very dangerous business. And the people who participated in it were smart, hardworking, and brave people. As it turns out, in the last decade or so, there have been some significant changes to the U.S. space program. Several, in fact, many of the space shuttle missions were committed to building the International Space Station, the most complex thing ever made by man. You may not know this, but towards the end of construction of the space station, Congress designated half of it to be a U.S. national lab. The mission of that lab is to enable and encourage the development of commercial activities in space. They were opening up space to U.S. industry and academia, and they wanted normal Americans to contribute science, technology, products, and services to the space program for the benefit of people on Earth. Thus, I got a phone call. In just the last five years, there have been more than 250 experiments and commercial efforts executed on the space station, impacting such things as how pharmaceuticals are developed, how clothing and shoes are made, how communications are delivered on Earth, and how we see our own activities affect our planet. Even high school students have had their experiments run on the International Space Station. Private companies like SpaceX are now delivering payloads to the International Space Station for NASA, launching satellites and cars into orbit and beyond, and will soon be delivering people into space to work, run experiments, or just be tourists. These developments are exciting, but there will soon be a new opportunity for all of us to rethink our relationship with space. We're starting to hear about real plans to go back to the moon and even on to Mars. These will be heroic and extremely dangerous missions. John F. Kennedy's words still hold true. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. We do these things because this is how we learn and develop, and through these acts, we become better. Space is no longer just an abstraction or fantasy on TV. Since 2000, as long as my son, Zachary, has been alive, we have had people in space continually. He is not only a digital native, he is a space native. There are, of course, many examples of technologies that were developed for the space program that have found their way into our everyday lives. Cordless electric power tools, infrared ear thermometers, even the scratch-resistant lenses in our glasses. These space spin-offs are exciting and impressive. But we are starting to see a shift. We're starting to see science and technology being developed in space. Just looking at the health-related sector, there are pharmaceuticals being tested on the International Space Station National Lab. There are new uh, drug products are being crystallized, and the drug targets themselves are being crystallized in space to better understand their structure. And new tissue constructs are being developed in space that will be used as models for human disease, and hopefully will deliver to us new therapies in the future. 
There have also been breakthroughs in new materials, chemistry, plant biology, and physics that will be built into the products that we buy and use every day. As we continue to see developments for programs to take us back to the moon and on to Mars, we will continue to benefit from the breakthroughs in science and technology that result. But perhaps more importantly, we will get to see humanity take its first real steps out into space. And by watching and participating in those efforts, we will continue to develop our relationship with space and perhaps better understand our place in the universe. Now that I work for the International Space Station U.S. National Lab, I see the way that our relationship with space impacts our lives every day and how it will change our future. Whether you know it or not, you already have a relationship with space. It's time to embrace it and to explore it. Rekindle that connection you have with your 10-year-old self that excitement, and look forward to the adventure that lies ahead. Thank you.